Good morning. Let me read Numbers 14, 1 through 4. That's the book numbers, not just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Numbers 14, 1 through 4. Then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. <clears throat> Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Now, I, I could have chosen most of chapter 14 and even part of chapter 13 towards the end there uh, to send you, but that would have been a lot to text uh, to those that I text to or to read to you this morning on our chairside chat. I cut it down to these four verses because, you know, this is ultimately the heart of the message here and what was happening, especially in verse 3 where the people say, the Lord is taking us to this country to die in battle. Our wives and little ones would be carried off as plunder. It would be better for us to return to Egypt. I mean, that's really at the heart of what's happening. And the question that runs through my mind is, what more did the Lord need to do to prove himself to Israel? After all, the Lord had already sent locusts, gnats, frogs, hail, darkness, and a death angel against Egypt, all while sparing Israel from harm. The Lord had led Israel with a miraculous pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. Every day they had the reminder of the Lord's presence in front of them. The Lord had parted the Red Sea so that the Israelites could cross over. Once they were across, the Lord collapsed the sea on the Egyptians, killing their entire army. Israel didn't have to raise a finger. The Lord fed a million people daily with flakes of food that appeared on the ground. When they complained that wasn't enough, he brought enough quail for a million people to choke on it. When there was no drinkable water, he caused a river of it to gush from a, a rock, enough for a million people to drink. And how was the Lord rewarded for all his miraculous deeds on behalf of Israel? with a golden cow that the people bowed down to and constant complaints against him and his chosen leaders. That's how. No wonder God told Moses here in chapter 14, move out of the way, I'm going to kill these people and I'm going to start over with you, Moses. So, before we start grumbling about what the Lord is or isn't doing for us in the moment, we might just want to pause and remember how faithful he has been in the past and his promise to be faithful in the present and the future as well. Pray with me. Lord, our memories are short and we do forget the promises that you give us. We forget what you've done. So I pray that you would lengthen our memories so that we might be aware of just how much you love us, care for us, and have provided for our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, friends, I hope you have a great day. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.